Hello folks, welcome to another Bitcoin market analysis by Inspo Crypto. Well, we just received the GDP data of the United States of America just few, well, not few minutes ago. It's now 45 minutes ago, but they nailed it because it was exactly minus 0.6%, indicating that the US economy is shrinking. But that's like forecasted, so priced in and very well calculated. Uh, is that bullish or bearish? Well, <laughs> to be honest, it's m mostly neutral because it's just indicating that it's under control. They forecasted exactly the count and um, also indicating that everything is fine. Jobless claims reduced, indicating less people jobless. Also interesting. Um, as mentioned in my tweet, Joe Biden would say, our economy is strong. That's the message behind. And is that bullish or bearish for the markets? In my opinion, my personal opinion, it's extremely bearish. And I can't tell you why. <laughs> it's confirming the Fed. It's just saying, hey, we can go with the rates even further because the economy is fine. Nothing nothing is happening, so we can fight inflation. We will see PCE tomorrow. That could be a nice indicator what's happening with inflation in the US. If it's declining, I would start to, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say what I'm going to say uh, to do, but it would be extremely funny then. However, um, Worst case scenario would be the inflation is rising because strong economy, inflation is going up. It's just, you know, the license to kill for the Fed. <laughs> it's just what we, we need to raise the rates even more because it's not having any big effect to the inflation and the economy is, is doing well. So hawkish like hell then. And, and that's something we need to see if it's going to happen. DXY reacting. So it lifted up. Didn't react big. Um, so now declining, going down to its support area at the moment of 112,500. Where I think it's going to bounce. We can go up once again, hitting 20,200, something I was expecting before the GDP data, but I was wrong, unfortunately. Um, so it's going to be very exciting what's, uh, what the markets will do tomorrow. But uh, I'm, I, I don't trust, I don't trust Bitcoin, I don't trust SPY, I don't trust DXY, everything can happen here. So we need to be extremely careful for the next at least 48 hours uh, or now maybe 26 hours or something until we have the PCE released and then we need to see what's, uh, you know, what's the message behind. If in inflation is declining, while the economy data looks not that bad, could let the Fed maybe rethink the next raise in interest rate and say, well, we don't need 75 PPS anymore. Maybe, but we know, and they mentioned, and they they were very clear in their um, uh, definition of its goal, not only Jay, my new friend, Powell, also Al Lagarde, <laughs> both said 2%. In my opinion, they are playing with fire, but that's fine. Let us see how that plays out. Let us check what the markets are going to do. 
Um, I had a chat today with George and I told him, look, the metrics, everything looks fine. We can go up even more because I don't see anything where I would say, ooh, that looks ugly. No, but I'm missing a little bit, you know, the strength of, of Bitcoin. That's the most thing. So I, I, I think even if we could go up to 20,000, 200, maybe 300, uh, I see a big opportunity to go down afterwards again because it really doesn't look bullish what they are doing. Absolutely not. But let us go and check what's happening. Wealth ratio, 30 days moving average. The daily one uh, dumped very hard to 38. 38 it's indicating so usually the weights ratio 30 days moving average should decline afterwards uh, with with uh, some delay as you know so it will take a little bit before it's illustrated here but maybe we go and make this here um, to go back to this bottom area for example and then we need to see if they are going to go up once again um, too early to say that um, so we will see but everything looks like it's calming down. If we take a look to the weights ratio 30 hours moving average, that's going to be much more important. One another dump. When I see such kind of dump, and if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that we had such dumps, usually also mentioning that whales are planning a bullish price action. The thing is, usually it happens uh, just like here. It takes um, a week, well, not really, three days. Now it took almost, wow, 10 days. It's a lot. It could be a big, big price move to the upside, but um, you know, that can take several weeks. Uh, we need to track that because it we have references in the history where we had such dumps and afterwards Bitcoin went up very hard and aggressive. So we need to see if that's going to happen. The only thing that doesn't match here is the stablecoin supply is declining, declining, declining even more. And you can see even the stablecoin reserves on centralized exchanges what it did it's declining also. So um, they are just taking out capital from the market and that's usually not bullish at all. However, the weights ratio 30 hours moving average went up, declined a bit, went up once again and it's declining. Usually when it's declining, usually then I would expect a bearish price move or at least a rising sell pressure. Not seeing it yet. So maybe it's not going to play out. Would, mm, would wonder me if that's not going to happen because that's what's happening. When they are pushing up means they are sending Bitcoins to uh, centralized exchanges. When it starts to decline also here, the preparation is done and then afterwards something happens. So maybe we will see another leg up to 20,200. That's at least my trade strategy for today, even I'm hatching once again, I have a long, I have a short position. My short position is a little bit bigger than my long position because I'm preparing much more a short than a long, but I'm, I'm using the volatility. Uh, it's how I'm making money right now. I mean, I did 150% since last week just doing that. Just, you know, if, if you, if, if the price maintains a certain trade range, you can use this volatility on both sides, making money. It doesn't matter if it's going up, it's going down, you will make money. You close the long then when it went up, you have your short, you put more money in your short, you have then a higher, um, a liquid, um, um yeah, a higher liquidation level, for example. So it, it makes it much more easier um, to make money without to risk anything. 
I'm I'm not losing money hatching all the time. Uh, but of course, I'm not making that big gain. It takes more time. That's the only thing. But I'm I'm just maximizing my my uh, risk management. So um, yeah, it, I'm I'm in my opinion, we are still on track. I could expect such a move, maintain there, and then go down once again. Um, I mean, it's it's not a teaser because I already tweeted about that. We have a gamma wall at 20,500, like last day before we went up to 20,400. And we have a gamma wall at 17,500 that maintains there. So the gamma wall at 20,500 20, is bigger. Usually, as mentioned just uh, last time, it's like a magnet. We should go up to 20,500. In my opinion, we will fail there and then be careful because then in this scenario could play out. We go directly down to 17.6 to retest our current bottom and then finally start to flip to bullish. And that's something we need to see. But uh, I would like to see, I mean, the gamma walls are indicating it's possible and it would be crazy and funny if that's going to happen because that's what I have in mind and that's what I'm also uh, mentioned sometimes in my analysis. My preferred trade strategy to go up, you know, and then retest our current bottom, then go up finally hitting end of the year, uh, maybe, yeah, whatever. I mean, we, we have seen yesterday some big option trades indicating end of the year even over so much more than 34k something i wasn't expecting yet but at least i could say 28k 28k hitting 28k until end of the year so that would be great it's not going to be easy their exchanges are not going to uh you know to give us their money uh on a voluntary way we need <laughs> we need to work hard for it so also here nothing big absolutely nothing big I had yesterday they took profit and that's mainly it we had here eight millions uh, in stablecoin inflows we had here almost 20 millions that was yesterday evening so usually they accumulate this stable coins there. Maybe we have 40 millions or something to push up, maintain there and let it fall once again. Could be possible. That's something we need to check even more and to track that. So, uh, but as you see, even uh, if we check the inflow activity related to Bitcoin, nothing. I mean, right now, last, last hour, 650 Bitcoins uh, or even two hours a goal let me check and refresh the site maybe it seems it has a lack of data here mm, yeah 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 now now it's there okay great so um yeah as as saying um we have here even more outflows than inflows we had here more inflows than outflows and so on and so forth even here so what we can see is it maintains relatively neutral. The only thing we can do to check any gaps between the inflows and outflows, and even that looks extremely accurate, is uh, if we flip to the daily resolution. We can see yesterday we had almost 5,600 Bitcoins inflows and 5,500 Bitcoins outflows. So one to one almost. Uh, we had here 17,000 Bitcoin inflows, but 18,000 Bitcoin outflows. So a plus of the outflows. Even here, 19,200 Bitcoins inflows, 22,100 um, Bitcoins outflows. So indicating that matches very well to the price action that these guys are at the moment um, yeah, buying more than selling. And that's what pushes the price to the upside. So um, also not big or at least I can't see any preparation at the moment 
um, you know, I mean, usually if we are noticing these gaps and the daily view between inflows and outflows in favor of inflows, that's indicating they are just holding bitcoins on centralized exchanges, accumulating them, usually also an indicator for preparation for the next dump, not happening at the moment. So also here, it looks more like we can go up to 20,300, 400, whatever. So let us see what's happening here, for example. Funny rate lifted up, it's declining. Same like open interest. The only thing that's still rising is leverage ratio. <laughs> what? Yeah, but it is what it is. Uh, at the same time, um, bigger activity related to stable coins. Also here, 100 millions, for example. Uh, here also in just 140 millions within two hours. So um, derivative markets are waking up um, once again. Someone taking profit big. I mean, we are talking about 20,000 bitcoins here within two hours, close before uh, or a few hours before they release the GDP data. So I guess someone just adapting uh, to the market conditions and just wanted to be on the safe side to take out his money, I guess, from the exchanges uh, or just to profit. You know, maybe it was shorting, nothing big, uh, just with huge volume. Because I don't see where all these 20,000 Bitcoins are coming from. I just see we had here yesterday uh, 8,700 Bitcoins where we know that the market maker was involved here. Uh, also here almost 10,000. So it's possible that on these two different days they are taking profit and remove those 20,000 Bitcoins from the derivative exchanges. So... If we take a look here, of course, they are right now liquidating uh, high leverage longs. We see that the open interest is declining. So also here matches very well. Funding rate now declining after it was um, going up, now declining. Only leverage ratio maintains its trend, its positive trend. So gamblers back on the table. On Binance looks similar because Binance is here also just because of its liquidity and volume, the main driver. The funding rate is lifting up. I mean, you know, the trend is, I think, very clear. So they are demanding more longs. Open interest here went down and leverage ratio, at least on Binance, even lower than open interest something that i wasn't expecting to be honest so someone else any i don't know what exchange it is but they are gambling they are really using high leverage positions let us take a look to bitmax and bitmax 60 to 40. okay i think it will flip and we will see once again 1.5 billion or something as soon we are reaching our level of 20,200 or something. But yeah, 60 to 40, still in my opinion too bearish. It's too many longs for what Bitcoin is doing. Um, we have we have since we reached our current level above of 19.5. We have initiated a downward trend, a downward trend channel. And we had our breakout at 90,266. And right now with the current one hour candle, it's retesting and failing to break out again within the channel, indicating we could go more to the downside from here. Even I don't, it's not part of my trade strategy because, you know, I was and still expecting we can go up to 20,200 to 20,400 and maybe then dump. But 
once again doesn't look strong so we need to be extremely careful here and very nice that ethereum matches with binance here let us take a look to the kingfisher now let me use this bin if they give me a blue one give me a blue one no oh yeah a red one okay i'm yeah however then let us see what's happening here Oh, on Binance, beers in power. Pfft. Maintaining, yeah, it seems 100 million liquidations. I don't know if that makes sense, however. So, um, yeah that's how it looks so indicating less liquidations clusters or lower liquidation clusters on the long side big one on the short side but with low leverage if takes Germany sees powerful bombs behind Nord Stream leaks. <laughs> okay, who cares? So let us check here. And once again, on FTX looks completely different. On FTX we have, even the trend looks similar, more on the long side and less on the short side. So, I don't know why FTX it's not well synchronized with Binance. That's what happened in the future, but I don't know why it's not happening anymore. Um, however, yeah, if they want to liquidate anything, then back to 19.1 before we can go up once again, but it, it looks very empty on FTX here. Okay, that's it. We go ahead. So, yeah, we did it. We had our breakout of 19k. Uh, as mentioned just before, uh, we had uh, our trend line, at trend, trend line there at 19,050. So I closed my short to profit. And now I'm just placing a new short with less funds. And just the money I just where I did my gain, just putting aside. That's what I'm doing all the time. It works very well, to be honest. And it wasn't possible on KuCoin or, well, Binance, yes. But as German, I can't trade on Binance anymore. So, yeah, BitGet makes it possible. Um, we can see what's happening. I mean, FTX aggregated i mean ftx not looking that bearish like the aggregated spot but everything you know looking very well it was a well synchronized um operation here we take a look that's binance well it's one to one everything um stable coin um collateral futures bitcoin collateral futures aggregated spot you see the cvd it's increases it's 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 a copy it's one to one a copy it's crazy so let us check here and um that's interesting that bitfinex started to buy directly here when they started to dump also very interesting in my opinion um, so also here we need to see could be now a change for Bitfinex to so go up and make the opposite of what the aggregated is doing so also interesting and Coinbase well Coinbase um, did almost the same like Binance, FTX and so on and so forth. Looks also very interesting here. 
uh, the first time I see that, that Coinbase is doing exactly the same like the others. Um, so very, very interesting. And we go and check our entities. I didn't check today yet, so maybe they are going to surprise us. Uh, retailers lifting up. These guys, well, lifting up. These guys, after they declined, pushing more to the upside. So indicating wallets with less than 100 Bitcoin still very bullish. These guys here, wow, they dump it hard. Um, indicating they reduce their wall their wallets by thirty thousand bitcoins that's big and the market maker entities after the last moves and lose twenty thousand bitcoins uh, withdrawal from binance it wouldn't surprise me if they were just the main drivers then let us check. Uh, they did for its yeah <laughs> four million eight hundred sixty thousand bitcoins here four million eight hundred eighty thousand bitcoins here if I check now um, let me see the entities it's four million eight hundred seventy seven thousand matches very well to those twenty thousand outflows from derivative exchanges bitcoins of course indicating these guys were shorting longing whatever with bitcoins did more bitcoins now we don't know if they are they removed their gains or maintained their gains on the centralized exchange to dump even more we don't know that um but yeah, we can see here the 6,000 or almost 7,000. So let us see if something changed here. No, nothing big, nothing big, no. Okay, so let me check something else. Bitcoin reserves on centralized exchanges lifted up but declining right now. Nothing big. We see here on derivative exchanges, stablecoin um, reserves declining, Bitcoin reserves declining, matches very well to this chart here where we can see that the downward trend continues on derivative even harder than on spot this time. That's crazy. Uh, however, uh, yeah, centralized exchanges bleeding, 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 uh, miners not doing anything, and that's it. Let us go forward. So we start as usual with Coinbase, and you see they are trying really, and in my opinion, if we break this area here, we will go directly to 18k. Uh, because SPY looks extremely, extremely, extremely bearish at the moment. Um, we need to see, I mean, you know, uh, DXY not even pushing and look what SPY did. So we need to be also here once again, extremely careful in my opinion, uh, what's going to happen here. Um, I don't think that we will really just push down and um, retest now the 176. It's I would expect even go up once again before down, but you know, we will see. However, we see here 187 has to hold. Otherwise, uh, 1875 where we have a wall, a gamma wall, they reinforce 175. So very interesting, even here, okay, we also have some older walls, but um, the most interesting part is the reinforced 17.5 and Coinbase really working on it to limiting the way down like Binance as well. I will show you, Deribit, what is Deribit doing? Nothing, absolutely, at least I don't see anything here, only 19.8. They were limiting 198. Very interesting that Deribit was uh, limiting the way up. Bitstamp as well. Wow, that's that's crazy. Didn't see that. 
limiting 19.5 didn't see that but also here limiting the weight down to 18.8 so it's going to be a challenge they don't want to let the price go down right now Binance as mentioned also here reinforce the wall at 18.5 you can see they have here orders and they are introducing more bitcoins more bitcoins more bitcoins as you see so they are really doing everything down to let the price go down that's not bullish at all uh, they didn't reinforce 17.5 as you see well no they didn't or no they reduced even only by 40 bitcoins but it seems also here we have a lot of volume so we need to absorb all of that and then we have a gap here so less volume they start again here between 17k and for example 16k also could be an indicator even they reinforce all this volume here as you see but could be also be an indicator that they are not expecting to let the price go more than 175 bitfinex <laughs> flash 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 algos working like hell yeah they are also here pushing the price a little bit more to the upside they are really avoiding to let the price go down okex oh no sorry ftx sam i forgot you also here 20200 uh wow a big wall on ftx that's also very interesting they were here limiting the way up they are now limiting the way down they reinforced it seems a little bit here 17.7 and they brought a lot of different little wall walls but that's that's since yesterday already so it seems they are expecting something a bigger move I, in my opinion that's because of tomorrow's pce because pce if pce is lifting up and inflation even more that's going to be ultra bearish because then fed will go even further with its um, interest rate uh, decisions and it wouldn't surprise me if they are going to talk about 75 bps and even 100 bps next time and markets will react extremely bearish then kraken and that's kraken spot also here 20,500. so they were limiting all these steps they uh, as you see even they declined here at 18k but also here at 75 they brought at 75 once again volume so they like binance like ftx like deribit like it looks like 175 could be the next bigger level to just uh, retest our current bottom that's uh, bitmax bitmax wall bringing some walls here but nothing big we have those also here remove to the upside remove to the downside uh, 16.7 would be the next bigger wall to the downside and also here 20,500 still limiting uh, very interesting and also trying to don't to let the price go down so to make it clear doesn't mean that these guys don't want to let the price go down that only means they don't want to let the price go down now that's the only thing so like i said with the new bottom why i'm not expecting new bottom this year because the big crap is still to come so if we are going to make twelve thousand dollars now what should i expect next year or the year after the thing is and that's why i think it makes extremely sense um just to push up to i don't know what will happen in the first half uh, in the first um half of the year 2023 of course but the the big sense will be go up to 34 35 distribute there and then let us start the bearish party 
uh, then we can go to 10, 12, whatever. It would be absolutely possible. Absolutely. But just to buy the dip, what do you think is going to happen when Bitcoin starts to go up to 34, for example? What do you think is going to happen with Atom? What do you think is going to happen with Quant? What do you think is going to happen with DOT? To whatever, XRP, uh, we have a lot of different projects there. They will go up like hell. They will push up very hard, very hard. And uh, that's why I'm accumulating, not big. Mm, some days when I see a little dip, I buy and maintain. And yes, I will sell in the first half of 2023 when we go up because they will skyrock. And that's our opportunity to make money. So, yes, uh, Binance Futures. Wow, look that. A lot of long positions here. A lot. They are just waiting to get triggered until 18.5. So it is possible that we will go down to 18.5 and then go up once again. Also interesting because they are not placing any huge volume at 75. We have here, they placed here 600 bitcoins in longs. You see, we have here also, they reinforce this area at 17.8. But 17.5, once again, indicator, hmm, we can go to 17.5. Bitfinex, they are all holding here. Still waiting at 16 to go long. Well, Kraken Futures, nothing. FTX Spot, look that, crazy. So it was it was part of the plan and it seems they were also expecting to go up like I said. But I don't know if no one wanted to buy. However, look what they are doing. That's if the export. Do you see that a lot of new liquidity? It seems they moved from the downside to the upside. So we are talking here, the biggest one would be at 15.5. We are talking about 17.6. I mean, 150, 130, 150, 150, 180. That's even the biggest one, 15.5. So, wow, interesting. While we have almost the same on the other side. Huh, that's interesting. Not sure what it is. If that's one again, something like an algo structure they need for their algos. Not sure, to be honest. I really don't know that. But they are retesting to break their 18.8 and in my opinion, it's not going to happen. So we will see, but they are very close to it. Very close. Let us go here. We can see that. So yeah, 18.5 maybe. Wow. It's going to be an exciting day. If that's today an exciting day, just imagine what's going to be tomorrow. So crazy. Okay, then let us stop here and go forward to my personal conclusion.